Hello everyone, welcome to PMFIS Current Affairs Prelims Test Series. My name is Ashish Malik and this is your test number 9 part 3. In this video we would be discussing the next 20 set of the questions. But before I begin, I really want you to do check out our test series which is now available at just 4 rupees, uh, at the rupees of 499 with 1000 high quality MCQs and this is a high time everyone should practice should practice as much as many uh, as mcqs as possible so do not compromise on that and definitely check out the test series guys so to begin with the question number 41 so question 41 was with respect to a very particular you know kind of typical kind of question with lot of concepts and facts involved question was with respect to gas chromatography and mass spectrometry now the words are quite heavy so the question was this term recently seen in reference to which of the following is it about the behavior of light or it has some relation to photosynthesis or similarity with photosynthesis or is it some analytic technique separating the complex mixture of compound or it is a biophysical technique that talks about the separation, identification, purification, compound of the mixtures. Now please understand, very simple logic, if you are seeing two options with somewhat similarity or somewhat same content, then try to see it from this perspective, even if you are not aware of the question, you see the two things are here, one is about, now the option three is also compound mixture, uh, complex mixture of compounds, even the option number D is about the mixture, the components of the mixture, something like that. So can you see that there are two options somehow, somewhere talking about the same concept? So that means my option is somewhere going to be between either C or D. At least I can figure out this much. It's not like it's always going to be this way, but it's one of the way you can eliminate the question if, in case you are not aware at all. So at least now I have a 50-50 chances depending on your luck but still you have some logic behind it no that at least you know the choices between c and d the question was a medium level question for people it may be tough also but at least now you are in a position to take some risk we'll come back to the answer first you need to understand the concept but i have explained the way you should approach this particular question so talking about this technique the gas chromatography and mass spectrometry in short called the GCMS, it is basically an analytical technique which actually separates the complex mixture of compounds into individual components based on their volatility, based on their chemical properties. So in nutshell, this technique is about how if there is a complex mixture of compounds, how we can separate individual components and why it is in news because recently Researchers have studied the flavor profile of Mushk Budiji. What is Mushk Budiji? It is actually a rice variety, which is short, bold, aromatic rice variety. And this particular type of rice is grown in the higher reaches of Kashmir Valley. I mean, you may have a separate MCQ coming on this variety of rice, rice as well. And while researchers were studying the flavor profile of this rice, they actually use this technology, the GCMS and understand and th this technique was used to identify as many as 35 volatile organic compounds in that Mushk Budiji rice samples and that is why it is in use. So that makes answer C, option C as my right answer. Question was a medium level question but again at least you, since you have eliminated the other two options, you are in a position to take little bit of the risk in this question. But remember, it was a, it, it's a very important question and do also expect question coming on the Mushk Budiji. That brings us to the next question number 42. Now, which one of the following wildlife centuries are mentioned in the statement you, you were supposed to identify? Now, very first thing, the first line says, that this wildlife century which we are we have to identify it is on the southern bank of Brahmaputra river of Assam so very clear very clearly you actually have to think and you have a very good uh, kind of um, you know um, hint 
which is there in the option. So be careful. So one thing is for sure, wildlife sanctuary which we have to identify should be in the state of Assam, right? And it has to be nearby Guwahati city. So this is your key hint here. Forget about the second one, but the first one is your hint. Now obviously it cannot be Koena. It Koena river. Think about Koena river. Think about the Iduki river that is in Kerala. So at least you can eliminate based on the river name you can eliminate the two options. Now only options are Brahmagiri and Pobitra. Pobitra wildlife sanctuary. Brahmagiri is also not in the state of Assam. So considering the names of these relief features, mountains, uh, rivers, you at least has a very very clear option. You have a way to eliminate the three options. Now only option now which is left is option number D that is Pobitra wildlife sanctuary. So I eliminated the first three choices because I know these three do not belong to the state of Assam. Based on the river and Brahmagiri, the mountain that, uh, that we have, right? So at least this approach I have used here and if now if I, if I compare the second statement and I know this fact very well that Pobitra wildlife sanctuary of the Assam is world famous for having highest population density of Indian one, rind, one horned rhinoceros species. In fact, this Pobitra wildlife sanctuary is also called as the mini Kaziranga. You understand that? So that approach could have helped many students eliminating the options. The question undoubtedly was a medium level question but could have been attempted simply by using the elimination technique. Some people say sir after 2023 elimination is no more relevant. It is. Now the way of eliminating things have changed but that's not like elimination technique is outdated or not going to help you out. Definitely it will help you out. Now, now assume it this way. If you have a standalone question coming on Pobitra wildlife century, so you need to know certain facts with respect to the wildlife century. Why? Because recently Supreme Court stops Assam move to withdraw the notification of Pobitra wildlife century. This wildlife century was notified by Assam Forest Department way back 1998, but recently, like few last month only, Assam cabinet withdrew the notification issue to the state forest department and after that this wildlife sanctuary was in news for many many reasons. The government argued that the sanctuary declaration was made without uh, addressing the rights of the villagers. It was issued without consulting the revenue department of CM and that is why we are withdrawing the things and all that. Let's not go into that kind of facts. But the point here is that this Pobitra wildlife sanctuary, it is around very near to Guwahati, it is on the southern banks of Brahmaputra river. Okay, now be careful about the banks also. Sometimes UPSC trick you by saying it is on the northern bank of Brahmaputra. So even it is in Assam, but you really have to be careful and for that you ha really have to have a good knowledge of the map. Every, every possible thing you should try on the map, be it your uh, uh, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves, national park, try to at least plot them once on the map, especially those in the news will help you out uh, very much in the exam. Pobitra wildlife sanctuary like I told you it is called mini Kaziranga because it has highest population of those one horned rhinoceros. But other the other species also uh, exist in this wildlife sanctuary including all these Asiatic wild, wild uh, water buffaloes, leopard, jungle flaws, civet, cats, wild boars, wild bears. All these varieties are available. Brings us to the next question number 43. Now this question again has a connection with some environment and biodiversity. The question is about the captive elephant rules 2024. This being very, very recent has absolute importance in the upcoming prelims exam. The question talks about the captive elephant rules. Which statement are correct? Now you need to figure out that. First of all, you need to know what this whole concept of captive, captive elephant is. Now, according to the provisions of Wildlife Protection Act 1972 that we have, elephants, they are scheduled one species. Scheduled one species are always going to get the maximum protection. That you know very well, right? Under both, be it 70, 1972 or the 2023 amendment rules. Both cases, scheduled one animals are those having the receiving the maximum protection for their survival. 
and therefore now elephants are part of schedule 1 like tiger like other important animals so similarly elephants are protected so they cannot be captured they cannot be traded whether live whether wild or captive that is the rule but here section 12 of the wildlife protection act it actually allows some schedule 1 animals to be translocated for some special purpose it can be education it can be scientific research so please understand uh, you see the connection between statement 1 and statement 2 as you are they are not allowed for trade purposes but they can be translocated for these special education scientific research purpose in fact they can be translocated to any to manage the wildlife populations also without of course without harming other animals but that can be done please remember one very important point with respect to the captive elephants captive elephants they have captive elephants they have a huge role in forest management timber transportation in fact they have a major role to play in the estates of the erstwhile royal families that time uh, long time before and they really have, have a very historical role in temple precincts for religious purposes and even today the captive elements are allowed to serve the purpose to, to play their historic role as it is without any issue. However, the strict rules guide that the transfer of such elephant that is a thing but the captive elephants, uh, elephants can still be used in their historical role as I have mentioned. Okay? Now please go back to the question and you can easily figure out the third statement is not up to the mark because it says the captive elephants cannot be used for all these purposes. They are allowed for this purpose given the historical role that they play. So third is wrong but second and first are absolutely true, absolutely correct. For many people the first and two may look little contradictory but for that of course you need to have real good factual knowledge this question I would say it was a tough question and you can you can take a risk depending on your understanding of the question of course it is not easy to attempt with a blind uh, kind of thing but you really have to be careful first statement is very obviously correct we know the importance of elephants right and second also seems to be correct so take a risk but with a very good calculation option B is the right answer only two next is question number 44 talks about the international cat alliance or international big cat alliance the IBCA now this international big cat alliance is very much inter related to India and you see India has a very important role to play in this particular international alliance why how let's try to understand first of all from where this idea has come of international big cat first of all what are the big cats you need to understand the big cats so very commonly when I use the word big cat so big cat actually include the uh, seven big cats including the tiger lion leopard snoop leopard cheetah jaguar puma so these seven total the, these seven animals together collectively are called the seven big cats okay this is one thing you need to understand now please understand from where this idea has come of international big cat alliance the idea came in 2019 and this idea very importantly this idea was floated by India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji and after four years this international big cat alliance was actually launched in April 2023 because we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the project tiger and that that makes all the relevance why this international big cat alliance was formed now comes the another question why this was created very obvious reasons it is this alliance it aims to set up there has to be a global network for the conservation of tigers and the other such big cats in total the big seven you can call them the big seven right this is important and this international big cat alliance it's a multi-country it's a multi-agency coalition 
where we have partners as 96 countries 96 big range countries and the best part of this is it also includes the non-range countries non-range countries are where you don't have these animals these seven cats are not even available so even non-range countries are included interested in big cat conservation so they are also allowed so the best part is it is not restricted to only those countries having such population everyone is welcome everyone is welcome to come and contribute the way they can this is interesting and important no another important point and very important in fact i would like to say the international big cat alliance it will consist of assembly of members standing committee secretariat and the best part its headquarters are again going to be in india right now we have very important headquarter in india in gurugram of international solar alliance and we, we have talked about it many many times so far it's one big international alliance where india is having headquarters no this is going to be the second one and there is a connection between this initiative and international solar alliance also because the framework of agreement of the so-called international big cat alliance it is drafted largely on the pattern of the same international solar alliance the isa which was originally the idea of india and france and it was initiated and established way back in 2015 but since this international solar alliance has been successful so far and that is why india has prepared the whole framework of this uh, big cat alliance on the basis of international solar alliance how we are going to do that there would be appointment of director general by ministry of environment forest climate change as interim head of this ibca secretariat till it has got its own staff and everything else but i think this is clear to everyone no now if you go back to the question where you have the four statements very important four statements now you see this particular alliance drafted on pattern of international solar alliance absolutely correct it conserves the seven big cats absolutely correct idea also started 2019 that is also correct why is the problem the problem is first statement why it says the ibca it is coalition of 96 big cat countries but does not include non-range that is wrong it include both range plus non-range countries both are absolutely welcome so how many statements are correct only three level of the question definitely it was a tough question not easy at all heavily based on facts can you take a risk without knowledge no sir you can't you really really have to be sharp enough and be aware of this question so better to skip if you are not in a position to eliminate if you can eliminate some of the statements then make sense then then you you can actually and see looking at the first statement at least at least eliminate eliminating one was pretty easy i mean think about it <clears throat> if you are making an international alliance obviously you are not going to restrict your alliance for some countries only because mostly all these global alliances they operate at a global level and in m most of these global in alliances like it is they are always open for anyone to come and join that is the whole idea making anything global not regional or not local right so even applying that common sense number one could have been eliminated but then again it was up to your understanding are you aware of the other facts or not so be little bit careful but i told you the way you have to think about this question brings us to the question number 45 and that question 45 is with respect to integrated command and control center now this was again a very tricky question now see the the keyword integrated command command and control center now this looks quite different but in reality ICCC is quite different why and how let's learn about it little bit what exactly this I triple C so this I triple C it's a tech driven solution with various IT applications and platforms one thing is clear this ICCC that we're talking about is heavily dependent or it has some relation to technology IT and all that right the ICCC employs all it can includes all advanced technologies you name it AI remote sensing GIS it is based on all cutting edge technologies that are possibly available today 
but the point here is very important the ministry is the real trick now reading the first two statements makes us somehow think if any thing is heavily tech driven it is based on it application it is based on advanced technologies i am very sure 99% students are going to think that oh it has to be maiti ministry of electronics it makes sense but that is was the real trick it is it has nothing to do with maiti then which ministry sir ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare that is the ministry we are looking at we talking about why how come icc has a connection with ministry of agriculture farmer welfare because under this i triple c we are going to provide using technologies that is for sure but we are going to provide various information to the farmers of our country about what by this tech driven platform we are going to tell the farmers the crop yields the production dots drought situation what should be the ideal cropping patterns based on uh, the climate uh, the agro climatic conditions based on the key performance indicators everything so ev this whole platform is about providing information in all these very wide range of topics wide range of things and this icc uses platforms including the krishi decision support system it is also included or it is also used at least uh, in icc it gather information geospatial information from various sources and based on that it creates and pick up the data so this is the whole idea uh, now that was the problem with the with the question as well why first and second are correct again this was a tricky question it looks like ministry of science tech or ministry of maiti but in reality it is not it is ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare so clearly third is wrong and i told you and you must have you must be um, you must agree with me by now 90% questions ministries are always going to be wrong so wherever any ministry is mentioned at least think twice think thrice on that and then only you get any solution or do any guess work first second correct at least i could have eliminated this my only options would have been 1 1 2 and interestingly and interesting look at this if you have eliminated number 3 and now there is again a confusion between um, only one or you know one and two please understand one more point if you read statement number 2 and 1 and 2 very carefully don't you see there is a direct connection between the two there is a direct connection between statement 1 and statement 2 because first statement itself says the platform is tech driven it has it application and second further elaborate the statement so even the two statements are different but they have a direct connection that means i cannot have only one correct or i can't have only two correct there they are always going to be either collectively correct or collectively wrong so my, if you apply that logic so my only option left is with is with option number b the question was a medium level but could have been attempted the way i have explained you you could have you could have thought that particular way that oh these two must be together because they seem to be together and they are well understood together that is the case next question 46 again very important tech based question it talks about the nuclear waste management one of the major challenges today in the nuclear industries how the nuclear waste is to be managed it's a big time question mark because you really have to have some credible management techniques no because nuclear waste is as bad as any nuclear disaster and it is not good at all in any any particular area of the world right talking about nuclear waste management look first let's talk about the particular technology so so far i'm sure every one of us are well aware of the word nuclear waste the nuclear waste is includes everything it includes the spent fuel also and that spent fuel is still i mean that fuel is spent and we have got we have derived nuclear energy from there but guys even the spent fuel of a nuclear power plant is extremely radioactive and it requires secure storage to prevent 
environmental contamination. Otherwise, even spent fuel is good enough to do any nuclear disaster. So, what I am trying to say, the fuel used in nuclear reactor becomes irradiated known as spent fuel when it is removed and it is always always challenging to handle nuclear waste especially the spent fuel. Why? Because it still has high temperature, it, has, it still has radioactivity. So often very common solution is, ok let's do one thing, let's make an underwater storage facility for dumping all the nuclear waste. That was the real simple thing. But now people are talking about other technologies also. The spent fuel, if you have to dump it, if you have to simply remove it, the best way, the spent fuel can be transferred or, or it can be reshaped into dry cakes. The dry cask, it can be transferred to dry cask for a long term storages. And that seems to be kind of permanent or at least a long term solution also. Are you getting the point what I am trying to say? So spent fuel is very important part of the nuclear waste. Another important thing, now that was the case with the solid nuclear waste. What about the liquid waste treatment facilities? Well, in nuclear power plants, you know, there has to be have the liquid water, liquid waste treatment facilities. And these nuclear power plants, they try to manage their waste. What kind of waste? The liquid waste. And, and right now, why we are talking about liquid waste treatment facilities because we have seen the kind of disasters especially in the Fukushima nuclear power plant that is part of Japan. So we have learned a lot of things from there now that is why talking about liquid high level waste it contains mostly the most fission products are, are a part of this high liquid high level waste and this kind of waste is always vitrified into glass for the storage. What is the vitrification? Do expect a direct question on that also. What is the vitrification? Vitrification simply means it's a full or a partial process or of the transformation of a substance into gas. If you are converting any substances being converted into glass, into the glass directly that is called vitrification. In India, this is a very common technique. Whatever, whatever nuclear waste we have. So now if you are preparing glass and of course there are two layers of the glass which are supposed to stick together. So in between while, while making it one glass you try to you know you try to dump that nuclear waste between the two layers and once they are stuck they are stuck. So nuclear waste is also stuck there forever and this process is called vitrification. I hope this, this makes some sense. Now in this particular case guys both statements are correct. So the first question which were first statement which was about the spent fuel, the solid one. So yes, for that we have the dry cask for long term storage is absolutely correct. For liquid high level waste, of course we, it is the most common fission product by the way, it is vitrified into the glasses. So the question was comparatively very easy, very straightforward. You take any textbook, any textbook on nuclear waste management, even NCRTs would be talking about nuclear waste management. Very important technique, straight away, straightforward without any terms and conditions. So I thought I really hope that you guys must have attempted this with both statements as correct. Okay. Now brings us to the next question number 47. Now for this question you need to have very good knowledge of the map. And see, I think there are even in, in within our test series only we have asked about Red Sea region for so so many times because right now Red Sea region is a 5 star pointer region where everyone is looking at the Red Sea for some reason or the other. But which statements are correct about Red Sea region? So you have you are given the 3 statements. Okay. Now very careful, let's learn and let's see the Red Sea for ourselves. So you know the Red Sea location very important, Red Sea is a very important connecting point, it connects it connects the, uh, the Suez Canal and from there it connects kind of Mediterranean. So Mediterranean is connect, connected via the Red Sea and uh, the Arabian Sea, it's a link between the two. Red Sea itself, remember this very important point, Red Sea itself is con considered to be the extended, mar uh, extended marginal water body of Indian Ocean only guys, right? So Red Sea is considered to be an extended part of Indian Ocean only, important thing. And it is world famous for one of the richest biodiversities in the world. And, and 
right now it was in news once again why not just because of biodiversity because unesco natural heritage sites are there in red sea like for example you, you see socotra so socotra is a small archipelago over there so there are many many such small small heritage sites within red sea so you may have this question directly coming like this which are the following are the unesco natural heritage sites of the red sea so there you have the three options with you socotra archipelago we just have marked the other two atoll and bay are there that includes the dungo dungo na bay and the sanganeb atoll my suggestion please please do see all the three on the map because they are absolutely important for place in news kind of questions you never know you may have a question coming on these kind of things so be very 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 careful about it that's absolutely important now statement number 2 very very important again so talking about the statement number 2 here and talking about the red sea please remember i told you red sea is a biodiversity rich region that's fine how much so almost 15 almost 15% of the red sea fishes are endemic species they belong to this one particular area only so red sea is very very famous for for its endemic species of fishes 90% of the red sea dotty backs and triple fins and 50% red sea have butterfly fishes so my point here is look at the richness of biodiversity it is such rich content that you can see here one more thing biological productivity if by chance the question talks about biological productivity of which of the following are the among the highest in the world then the answer is supposed to be gulf of aden and this alone is important as an individual mcq so gulf of aden is considered to be biologically most productive area of the world of the sea especially also since we are talking about gulf of aden why it is important because it is the gulf of aden connecting the red sea and arabian we already have seen that guys you want to see it again you can see here is the gulf of aden you want to come out from red sea that is your passage this can you acha okay tell me how many students can tell me the name of this particular strait i have discussed it in uh, class for so many reasons tell me the name of this very important choke point between red sea and gulf of aden if you know the answer of the strait do let me know in the in the comment section below and do prepare about these uh, important places in news i am telling you again and again you are going to get questions coming on that as well okay this is absolutely important absolutely very very important and and other features distinctive feature that that belong to the red sea so you must have heard of the of of another archipelago called the farsan or the dahlak archipelago which belongs to the southern red sea they are also world famous for their coral reefs so you may have a question coming on that as well so all these archipelago all everything whatever i'm talking about is important from the places in news perspective okay this is important guys and now if you go back to the question very simple question now it is you you can eliminate very basically any anybody can eliminate gulf of aqaba connecting red sea and arabian sea no sir gulf of aqaba is towards the northern side of red sea gulf of aqaba is there at sinai peninsula if this is your sinai peninsula and this is your red sea so this particular water body is called the gulf of aqaba this water body called the gulf of suez and this is your gulf of aqaba so clearly it lies to the northern side it doesn't connect the red sea and arabian sea and you you have seen yourself it's the gulf of aden connecting the two this is wrong second statement is like too much exaggeration 40% red sea red sea fishes are endemic no sir they are precisely 14.7 only i mean upsc hardly twist these kind of things but you should have the idea about the question and first statement is correct we already have seen the socotra archipelago we already have seen that it is one of the unesco natural heritage sites in the red sea that's true and i have mentioned you and i already mentioned you other other two as well so do re, uh, learn about them and do read about them for sure so here only one statement is correct level of the question um i would say it was a it was a you know medium level question and uh, at least 
two out of the three statements are comparatively very easy like for example the third one and second is very obvious to eliminate i mean there is there are hardly any such water body that can claim of having 40% endemic species it's obviously wrong it's obviously exaggerated now whether socotria socotra archipelago is a part of unesco heritage site or not now it's a matter of fact depending on that fact you know or that you know or not but at least in this question some risk could have been taken without much trouble could have been taken now next question again upsc favorite and that question is about the small claw otter so species were given iucn status repeatedly the questions are coming repeatedly because i give them four star rating at least you are going to get some questions on the iucn but how many pairs are not correctly matched that we need to figure out for that at least we should be aware of these species guys so the first species that 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 is in the news these days is this one particular species that you can see on your screen look at on your screen guys so this particular small friend of ours is called asian small clawed otter it's an otter and this otter has iucn status of being vulnerable because they are found in fresh water habitats of many countries south asia southeast asia including all these countries india nepal bangladesh myanmar thailand Mal malaysia indonesia and philippines and comparatively since it has some wider presence that explains in our head that it has to be vulnerable not something critically endangered or something because you see it still has wider habitat and because of wider habitat it is going to survive okay but the iucn status is vulnerable remember that and they are carnivores uh, in nature okay do remember that as well now talking about another species called indian vulture see majority of the vultures majority and especially the indian vulture you know it very well guys we have we have seen the culture the vultures they were dying because of the kidney failure why why kidney failure because of the banned antibiotic drugs that were that were that were that were given to the uh, to the animals especially the the cattle and uh, later when vultures used to feed on those carcasses they used to have this kidney failures and especially especially the veterinary drug declofenac which is banned right now so if you consider that logic indian vultures already they are the number has declined like hell so that explains even if i have to guess i can guess maximum number of vultures today they are critically endangered and another another important uh, uh, species was the bintu roam which is which is a bear cat okay which is native to south asia or southeast asia and they are also of vulnerable category so if you look at the statement if you look at the question so clearly you will say sir we have some issue the two statements are not correct we and we have seen Sm small uh, clawed otter is not endangered and bintu wrong is also not extinct in wild it is vulnerable it is also vulnerable yeah only one statement is correct the long billed vulture they are critically endangered so how many not correct not correct so the answer is going to be only two two are not correct and this is also very important to pick sometimes you know the answer but you somehow fail to pick up the right answer so yeah straight away question with the with kind of medium level i would say but something you could have attempted or at least you could have taken a risk rather skipping it all together because with some kind of logic at least you can you can still figure out some solution question number 49 again the statement says how many pairs how many statements are not correct at all the question was with respect to arsenic one of the most infamous pollutant that we have especially the water the water pollution that it created is humongous humongous now please understand why we are focusing and try to villainize arsenic there is a reason behind it arsenic is an element symbol as as known as the metalloid and classified as a group a carcinogen means right now as per the latest studies arsenic is carcinogenic means it is cause it is cancer causing 
cancer causing so yeah the arsenic that we used to have you now it is classified as a cancer causing agent and this is what we are we are seeing and in fact it is capable of triggering the skin cancer as well and that is one bigger problem that we have but the real big problem is something different why i am telling you that <clears throat> the question says that you know how arsenic gets into our food arsenic is already a pollutant it's a it's a high notorious pollutant but when this pollutant starts entering your food chain it starts entering the food chain of our ecosystem and then after entering the food chain it bio magnifies in your body because imagine this scenario let's say that you are you are growing some rice or some cereals and we all know plants require plants require lot of water application they need irrigation so plants like rice and cereals they acquire very essential micronutrient from the soils and the ground water but what if this ground water itself it is polluted with arsenic the real problem start there because the arsenic is absorbed by the plant along with the water and then this is a this is a situation of bio accumulation only but the real problem starts when that particular pollutant enters our body bio accumulate then bio magnify and that really causes problem and that is that is one such thing that you should be aware about forms and concentration of arsenic depending depends on all these but you see majority like 90% indian ground water is actually having the problem of arsenic it's not a new problem guys almost almost you will see this as a very very humongous problem of arsenic do you know one interesting fact guys that rice always any day likely to have more arsenic comparison to the other cereals why because rice contains inorganic arsenics as group 1 carcinogenic and let me tell you guys any rice or any food item is always going to pose a threat significant health concern when rice is cooked in the water and water is having lots of arsenic once it enters your body becomes really really dangerous guys that at least you need to keep in your head how many statements are not correct sir all are correct all are correct you can easily relate statement 2 and 3 and even if you are not able to recognize this then focus on the keyword as carcinogenic or carcinogen right so now you can understand that how to approach this question how many statements are not correct sir all three are absolutely correct straight forward question without any trouble without any issue medium level could have been attempted how many not correct not correct none because all are correct that brings us to the question number 50 Question fifty was with respect to the plastic waste management rules twenty twenty four. You see, you must have read about. There are many many such plastic waste management rules, but now we are very serious and we are talking about the plastic waste management with the latest twenty twenty four rules. Let's see what we can answer in that. So, how many statements were correct? Was supposed to figure out. But what is this plastic waste management? That is the important thing we need to focus upon. So recently. the government of india has issued their plastic waste management rules what are the aims why these rules were created why these rules were implemented aim is simple enhance the plastic waste management practices in the country that is important now very one more thing if you go by the definition so ultimately when i when i say that plastic waste and its management is very important responsibility of the producer if i am consuming let this is my this is my glass uh, uh, made up of glass now if if let's say if i have this as a as, a, as some plastic glass why it is selling because i am consuming it because there is a demand that's why there are sales so very interestingly when in 2024 the very recent plastic waste management rules were passed by the government of india they came up with a new definition exactly who producer is so now they have made the definition of producer as a quite wider one now 
it includes any entity engaged in manufacturing of the plastic packaging yes you will be considered as producer obviously but please understand as per the rules even the person engaged in the manufacturing of the intermediate level that is also going to be considered as producer even the person engaged in contract manufacturing of the product they also have or they also share some responsibilities that is important but even more important is that when it comes to plastic raw material please remember guys manufacturing and importing of plastic raw material required to apply for if any company wants that then you have to apply for registration at least you have to register yourself with the state pollution control board please remember the central government has nothing to do here so the whole management everything depends on all the permission to be given depends on the state pollution control board this is important okay another one when you talk about any role of after central uh, after the state government the next important role is of local body local local body how they are going to contribute to the plastic rules because the local bodies they shall undertake the assessment the real assessment of the plastic waste generated it is the local body who has to ensure the plastic waste existing in dump sites by 30th june of every year as india has promised so at least this is important now so now if you look at the question guys now i explain all the three so now if you go back to the question so clearly see there is only one and only one problem in the question we just have understood when it comes to plastic waste management we should not be including the central government plastic weight waste management can be done without the central pollution control board even the state pollution control boards are good enough so only problem with set statement number 2 one and three are absolutely correct so answer is only two here i hope that makes sense why we are discussing it who exactly are these plastic waste management authorities because now the first statement says the plastic producer includes a person engaging manufacturing intermediate material also so we already have covered that clear everyone okay brings us to the question number 51 question 51 is quite interesting uh, it says which of the following organizations publishes the india employment report which was in news creating all the buzz which was required but who exactly publishes that india employment record report it is it ilo yes sir is it institute of human development yes sir so first and second are absolutely correct but niti ayog has nothing to do with india unemployment report so the answer is 1 and 2 not niti ayog so this question so very easy should be attempted all you need to have just one reading of i india unemployment report that you need to do so please look at the statement guys recently this uh, report that we are talking as a as a question it was very much in the news creating the buzz why because right now in this moment you are talking about india employment report which is published by ilo because i am talking about employment employment is all about the workers workers or the laborers that's why very logically labor organization is included and even institute of human development but what kind of findings we have got is strictly strictly shocking guys from the india unemployment report as per this recent report it says from 2020 to 2022 agriculture sector saw increase by approximately 56 million worker people and they those people were were specially those were migrants you remember those those long queues uh during 2020 people were into panic everywhere people were into the panic because of the covid pandemic and that's why the, those migrants they were in in standing in the lines and lines waiting to go home and we have seen people coming on barefoot as well so that time people returned to their home states or they returned to their villages and of course in that case lot of people lot of new people got engaged in the agriculture sector that is important thing in fact in 2020 there was a significant movement of the informal workers 
from urban to rural areas this was again a trend picked up by the things right agriculture workforce we already see it it increased by 12.1 million something something in 2022 as per the report the proportion of women employment it was significantly higher than that of the men where women in in india having 63% but agriculture comparison is 38% of the of the men and please remember one very important key line here why we are we are we are talking about this report key point is here almost 83% of india's unemployment workforce consists of young people and out of that complete workforce 90% is still it is still working in informal sector of economy you see why why people are dependent on informal economy so much okay sir that was the question so if you now now you know the answer Ni niti ayog has absolutely nothing to do with it answer should be 1 and 2 and basic points we already have discussed that brings us to the next question guys statement 1 statement 2 upsc favorite question assessment uh, assertion reason is one of the favorite topics of upsc and since it has recently re entered the game because before 2023 it was somehow believed to be outdated but now upsc came up with another interesting fact on this so statement 1 statement 2 the statements are with respect to himalayan region at least i know what i am supposed to focus upon okay now second statement is absolutely correct based on a very simple knowledge you think of himalayas himalayas are the youngest mountain absolutely sir youngest fold mountain you can you can add on and they are tectonically active yes sir we know we know there are there are frequent earthquakes that come across himalayas then the first statement says himalayan region accounts for 44% of all disaster reported in the country last century so the my point is both statements being correct and don't you think the second statement is explaining statement 1 very beautifully statement 2 is very correct explanation of statement 1 right so in this category answer is supposed to be a medium level question risk could be taken not blindly but with some logic how let's try to understand so we are talking about the himalayan region first thing is first talking about the himalayan region which is responsible for alone himalayan region alone responsible for 44% of disasters reported in india and out of that approximately 687 disasters that we experienced in the last 100 125 years they were all in himalayas so definitely we have to we have to bring this topic forefront and please understand one interesting fact it is sikkim sikkim state that saw the highest number of landslide incidents in the last couple of years remember one more thing statement 2 himalayan regions are prone to disaster yes sir already always remember it as a fact Himalayan region doesn't matter you are what kind of Himalayan region you are referring to any Himalayan uh, region are always going to prone to disasters because they being the youngest mountain ranges in the world they are highly prone to erosion and they are tectonically active Himalayas are tectonically active that's why even tomorrow we never know something something big can happen so that the life is very uncertain in the Himalayas uh, giving they are still rising they are still in the young stage So yeah, the two statements kind it beautifully explains each other. Next question number fifty three. Now this question again is very important and very much in the news these days. The question is about the meme coins. Meme coins, sir, they are also cryptocurrency, but very different kind of crypto. What kind of crypto makes you makes you smile, makes you laugh? Funny names, something like that. What is a meme? On internet, if you if you are if you are connected to the internet, so internet people know what the meme is. so meme coins that we are talking right now meme coins are digital currencies yes sir they are digital currencies originated from the internet memes yes having hilarious or humorous characteristics absolutely correct are they highly stable now this here comes your logic your basic understanding the question claims that the meme coins are very stable have very high value fine 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 but tell me they are ultimately crypto no and do you know any crypto which is stable cryptos are actually in famous for being highly volatile and we know this thing we have understood from the journey of bitcoin that they are highly 
and highly and highly volatile right so definitely my second statement cannot be right at any cost if there is any cryptocurrency they cannot be highly stable not at all so if i have to eliminate my option number 2 please with a very common sense this question is all about the common sense it's all about the sensical elimination <clears throat> right and you have seen just by understanding that meme coin is a crypto and cannot be highly stable i have got my answer best example today is the doge coin is the flocky they are some of the examples of the ultimate umbrella of meme coins so option two wrong or one and three are absolutely correct i hope this is clear to everyone absolutely clear to everyone okay sir brings us to the next question <clears throat> question number 54 Again, straightforward question, guys. How? If the question says, which of the following states starts state declared man-animal conflict as a state-specific disaster? Now, please tell me from which state you can expect such kind of thing? It is Kerala. Kerala became the first state of India to declare that this man-animal conflict from today onwards. It's a state-specific disaster. It is the Kerala. Now, before going to the detail, it was a very easy, like a Malai Laddu kind of question, very easily asked by, by the UPSC. So, Kerala definitely became the first state of India to declare man-animal conflict a state-specific disaster. Why? Because recent in the recent couple of years, we have seen lots and lots of animals, they, they die, right? And uh, because of the animal attacks, even human life is always at stake. Now, what, what is going to happen? Okay, fine. Now, let's assume Kerala. Okay, fine. Kerala declared it state specific. What is going to change? Where is the change? The change is here. So, so far, it is the forest department being in charge of, the, of managing man-animal conflict. But now, since Kerala became the first state to have its own man-animal conflict uh, being a state specific disaster, from after this all these new rules new rule says that now you are going to have a wildlife protection act the management to be done under that and responsibility shifts to state disaster management authority it used to be on other bodies but now since the, now it it, has, it was it is made as state specific disaster you have the options in front of you clear everyone so straightforward question without any difficulty or without any approach that brings us to the question number 55 the question 55 talks about high altitude platform system now let me tell you guys this is very big new buzz of the market why high altitude platform systems they are drone but they are not drone they are satellite but they're not satellite they are considered to be pseudo satellites but why they are drone but not the drone, satellite but not the satellite. So what exactly these HAPS are? What are these high altitude platform systems? You need to focus on that. How? Let's understand first what is this whole concept all about. Recently why it was in news? Because the National Aerospace Laboratory NAL successfully completed the first test of the solar powered, for important word is first, important word is solar power. Another important word is pseudo satellite. So basically, the high altitude platform systems are nothing but a UAV only. That is fine. It's a new age UAV that we have created. It performs for why it is called pseudo satellite because it performs the functions very similar to pseudo to any satellite. That is there. So talking specifically with respect to high altitude platforms. These are those kind of pseudo satellites, not original satellites, but they are in they are in a position to fly as up as 80 to 20 kilometers. It is almost the double height normally commercial planes they fly at. So HAPS is not is going to fly almost double the height of the commercial pilots. 
the HAPS system can carry 35 kg payload as of now. It can operate at 18,000 meter altitudes for the 30, 45 days. And very interesting point, an important point as well. The HAPS, they fly not in troposphere, but they fly in stratosphere. Being so important, understanding the heights from that perspective, you can, you can easily see that HAPS are going to surpass the troposphere. And somewhere near at 65,000 feet, they are going to fly in stratosphere. That is one important interesting fact. Clear everyone? Okay. What makes HAPS so important? Why? Because it can generate solar power. It can remain there at its position. The HAPS, once you have launched it, it can stay there for as much time as it wants. Right? But say again, if that is the case, why we are not calling it as, uh, as a satellite? Why? Because it does not require a rocket to get into the space. Normal satellites, they want somebody, they want, they want something to push them up like rocket or something. But HAPS need nothing. That, that, is, that makes it even very cost effective, you can say. So now if you look at the options, all three statements are going to be absolutely correct. HAPS system, the results are in front of you. Is it important? Is it tough? Is it medium? I would say it's, it was a medium question. You can take a little bit of risk, but be very careful with that. Okay, important. So here, how many correct, sir? All three. All three are correct. Okay, so now that brings us to the next question, guys. Next question is question 56. Very straightforward question. The question 56 says, the three words, Sela, Bombdela, and Nechi Fu. These three words associate with what? Are they wildlife centuries? Bombdela is something we all are aware. We know Bombdela is a mountain pass. Even, let's say by chance, we, do, we are not aware of the current affairs because Sela is in news because of the news, because of the current affairs. Because in Sela, we have seen the world's longest tunnel was inaugurated recently. That was that is why it is in news. So clearly, the Bombdila, Sela, Nefishu, they are not wildlife sanctuaries. Neither they are national parks. They are simply mountain passes, and that too with northeast India. Okay, that is important, guys. So look at the three names. So all three are passes in northeast India. Very easy question, straightforward question, without any difficulty. But to know, to give you a little bit idea about the context, why this question was asked to you in the test. Why? The reason is simple, guys. Our Prime Minister has inaugurated world's longest twin lane tunnel called the Sela Tunnel in Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. And because of this longest world, uh, world's longest twin lane uh, tunnel, it, it was in use. And now, it is a longest twin ten, uh, tunnel, uh, you know, twin lane tunnel. So, which points it is going to correct, uh, connect? So, basically, the whole idea is to connect Tejpur to Tawang, Tawang of Arunachal Pradesh, and Tejpur belongs to Assam. So, that is the real idea. With this uh, world's longest twin tunnel, twin, twin lane tunnel, we are going to connect these two states, and the whole route of this connectivity is going to pass from these three major passes called Nemchifu, Bomdila, Sela. All the three locate politically in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. And let me tell you guys, this may become very importantly, this may become places in news. It they, they itself it is a places in news. And considering that, you at least should be aware of two, two facts about it. Why I should remember Nechif, Nechifu Pass? Because it is situated in the in the western coming district of Arunachal Pradesh and it is a very important strategic route connecting various districts of west, Kamang and Tawang. Also remember guys, Bomdila Pass, very world famous important. Again, but this is located in the west coming district of Arunachal and that is why uh, it is a vital link. Uh, if there is any plan or plane to connect of Tawang with the Assam, so it's it's important connectivity route. And Sela Pass, though, of course, 
one of the highest moderable mountain passes and that's why we are constructing infrastructure in that particular area right so yeah all three are the mountain passes that brings us to the next question guys question number 57 question 57 talks about the khavda khavda renewable energy park the word itself sounds like some rajasthani word or gujarati word you see so khavda is if you let's say you are not aware and you know khavda is a is a tone that you you can see in the north india or northwest india clearly cannot be andaman nicobar cannot be sundarban because sundarban you have the west bengal presence the word khavda renewable energy park khavda is of course name of a village only so there you have the options of thar at least you have the option of thar relate to that or run of kutch both are deserts so khavda renewable energy belongs to which state is it rajasthan no sir it is gujarat yes the khavda renewable energy park is belonging to it belongs to run of kutch in gujarat so answer question 57 straightforward question easily easy question but you can, can could have attempted it at least take a risk because now you have a 50 50 chance and still bit little bit risk can be taken why we are talking about this uh, renewable energy park why khavda is important another important point that you need to figure out this khavda it is in news which is built in run of kutch this particular renewable energy project it is it is spread across 726 square kilometer and who has guess who has got this renewable energy park adani green energy limited successfully operationalized a 10000 megawatt capacity solar energy at khavda world's largest hybrid renewable energy park this is a specialty guys khavda is probably the world's largest energy park having hybrid models hybrid model what this one renewable park has both the windmills and the solar panel as well that makes makes it absolutely classic absolutely important by 2026 you are going to see the full fledged version of khavda renewable park and the ultimate target is to generate 30 gigawatt of clean energy the hybrid of the the wind energy windmill plus the solar one and yes that's absolutely important and very important places in news as well now the next question i think this is again a very simple question guys you must have heard the word t plus 3 t plus 2 t plus 1 now it has become t plus 0 so what is this t plus o settle settlement system settlement cycle so clearly look at the word the keyword the keyword is not t or plus two, 0 or something settlement system or settlement cycle that is your key word so now you are aware that t plus 2 has something to do with settlement what settlement let's say you don't have the idea so clearly clearly what options you can eliminate so if it is a settlement system cannot be between bank or insurance company it is not a settlement for unsecured short term borrowing that is not the case as well what exactly this settlement cycle is settlement system t point zero says trade related settlement that is why the word is t trade related settlement done on the same day of completion of the transaction that is why the word is t plus zero now normally if let's say if we are having t plus two payment settlement system so how it will happen now today if i have put uh, if i have done some financial transaction it will take two days to get that into my account that is t plus 2 so here plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 is nothing mm -hmm. but the extended time that is going to take in the system so here t plus o now we'll get in, into the detail first we'll talk about that as well so why it is in news because now it is in news because of sebi the security exchange board of india sebi has recently proposed introduction of this t plus o where this is insane but important why because the SEBI directed all the clearing settlements of fund it says we want to go with this T plus O model where where what is the benefit why we are going to do that of course the same day the transaction is going to get completed so let's say if you have bought some shares on today Tuesday and you want to uh, let's say do some transactions 
normally with 2 t plus 2 t plus 3 t plus 1 it will it take so so transaction happened on monday you will get it on tuesday in t plus 1 t plus o same day t plus o means there is no delay t plus o means absolutely no delay that is the case okay that that, that is proposed not yet implemented it is simply proposed that is the case clear everyone so what kind of questions i would say this is so yes sir this is a this was a tricky statement but of course easy and uh, this t plus o settlement itself says a lot and you may have a, may have this feeling that okay at least i can with elimination technique at least i can eliminate some of the options do remember and sebi is not going to do this t plus 1 everywhere as an initial as a testing one guys only the top 500 listed equity shares are going to be studied only these 500 listed quality shares are going to get the benefit of t plus o next question already it's a kind of repetition why we just have we just have discussed about the seller pass now the question is seller tunnel it will provide all weather connectivity between we just have learned between tejpur in assam to tawang in arunachal pradesh i think probably one of the easy question answer is c here and we already have discussed it earlier and and specifically just talking about this one cellar uh, tunnel only do remember the names guys sometimes you may have a confusion with the names and the concepts so here is tawang belonging to arunachal here is Tejpur belonging to Assam and this is your cellar tunnel on the map look that connects the two and and interestingly this is world's longest twin lane tunnel that's absolutely important so the best part is even even at the worst weather conditions you are going to have this connectivity between these two states and that is absolutely important so do remember straightforward i'm not going to repeat last question question number 80 uh, sorry question number 60 it is about identify the country which is often associated with something called as lazarus group lazarus group belongs to north korea what is lazarus group it is very notorious cyber crime group it's a cyber crime group it's a hackers group which country see these days state sponsored cyber attacks are very common even china has lots of such groups russia has such lot of groups which are state sponsored cyber hack hacking groups they call themselves as ethical hackers we are supporting our country by bringing other countries down so yes it's a new phenomena which is there but this one particular group called Lazarus group belongs to North Korea. So here, um, I would say it was an easy question if you know the answer, but become really tough because it's purely 200%. It's purely based on fact. That's the reason. So you can't uh, really do any guesswork. So yeah, take a risk, but with very calculative risk. So talking more about the Lazarus uh, group that is uh, that, that is there in the news, so we know it very well that uh, this is a notorious hacking group believed to be sponsored by North Korean government, especially to conduct the cyber attacks on various targets. It, is, it was believed, why it, again it was believed that the very recent Bangladesh bank heist was actually done by this Lazarus group of North Korea. It's quite possible. No evidences, but quite possible it was in the news. And not just this, not just the Bangladesh bank heist, this particular Lazarus group also has done thefts from cryptos to Ronin network, Horizon, Atomic Wallet, everything. So that is the right answer. So right answer has to be C, already mentioned. So that is all from my side guys, the uh, next uh, 60 questions that we discussed, uh, total in total we have discussed 60. I really hope you have enjoyed this particular video. If you did, then do let us know in the comment section below. We really want to have a like from your uh, side if you if you are enjoying the videos you are getting to learn something and if you really like our work then don't forget to give us a feedback as well in the comment section box thank you so much god bless you see you guys very very soon in the next part number four and all the best for your upsc exams